all fractions. Let's see. Yeah. One half x minus two thirds y is equal to um, five six. That sounds good. And oh, three fourths x plus five eighths y is equal to negative one. I'm making it up. In other words, I have no idea. It's a system of equations. Now, are we going to do it with elimination or substitution? Um, it really doesn't matter, I, but... I think elimination. Elimination? Either way, the first step is exactly the same. Right. If you do it as substitution or if you do it with elimination, your first step is get rid of the fractions. Uh -huh. So how do I get rid of the fractions in the top equation? Multiply by six. Multiply by six. So you take this entire equation and you multiply it by six. Uh -huh. Where we write the answers do, does depend on if you're doing it by substitution or elimination. Are we doing it by substitution? Elimination. elimination. If you do it by elimination, you want to stack them. You want to make sure the x's and y's are on the same side and the number is on the opposite side. If you're going to do it substitution, you're going to put them next to each other so you have room to work underneath them. So if we're going to do this elimination style, I'll just write the answer down below. So 6 times a half. 3. So you get 3x. Minus 6 times 2 thirds, four. 3 goes to 6 twice, 2 times 2 is 4y, is equal to, and don't forget to multiply wow. the 5, 6, that'll just turn into 5. Wow. So that'll be the top equation. Multiply the bottom one by? 8. eight. And 8 times 3 fourths? 6. So we're going to get 6x plus 8 times 5 eighths? 5y. And then 8 times, don't forget that negative 1, negative 8. Now, if we're doing an elimination, which one do you want to get rid of? Um, X's or Y's? It doesn't matter. X. I might do both of them. Um, if we're going to get rid of the X's, what would you multiply the top and bottom by? The top by negative 2. Okay. And the bottom by? 1. one. Yeah, 1. Now, you had a choice. You could have multiplied the top by positive 2 and the bottom by negative 1. Negative that would have worked, too. All right, so if we multiply by negative 2 on the top, that gives us negative 6x plus 8y is equal to negative 10. And the bottom by 1 doesn't change a thing. And then you take the two equations and you add them together and see what happens. So the 6's cancel, the 5y and 8y become 13y equals negative 18. And then divide by 13 and you get one of your coordinates. Negative 18 thirteenths, perfectly fine number. Now because you're getting that ugly fraction, I highly suggest you go back to the top and eliminate the other one. So if we're going to eliminate the y's, what would you do? What happened? <laughs> we solve for <clears throat> y by eliminating the x's, but it's an ugly fraction and I don't want to plug it back in. Oh, okay. So if I get rid of the y's, I can solve for the x's, and I don't have to work with fractions ever. So what would you multiply the top by to get rid of the y's? I'll show you start the second one. Yeah, five. just start back at the beginning five. here. Don't go up there. So multiply by 5, the bottom one by 4. four. They're opposite signs already, so you're pretty safe. And if we do that equation, we're going to get 15x, sorry, negative 20y is equal to 25. The bottom one will be 24x plus 20y and negative 32 and add those two together. So what do we get out of that mess? Yeah. 39 39x is equal to? Negative 7. Negative 7. So we get x is equal to? Negative 7 30 Okay. Thank you so much. And then the coordinate, of course, would be negative 7 30 comma, negative 18 thirteenths. And what would that graph be? Oh my god, you can't graph that to solve it because those two, the intersection will happen between the box, inside the box, rather than at one of the corners.
What do you mean, how do you make the law? Yeah, yeah. This time it actually worked the way I wanted it to, not like yesterday or Monday where it came out nice numbers. But I mean, that's it. And guess what we're going to do today? More of that. More of that. Any other major questions? Before we move on. For those people that finished it. I'll know eventually. <laughs> I look every once in a while. Especially on test day when I put those grades in. Alright. So today we're going to switch it up a dimension. Uh, this is 4-2. Systems of equations with three variables. Again, this is going to be considered linear. And what a linear equation in three variables looks like is AX plus BY plus CZ. Thank you. Um, AX plus BY plus 3CZ uh, is equal to D. Now, if AX plus BY is equal to C is a line, what do you think AX plus BY plus CZ equals D represents? If you're the uh, simplistic three-dimensional graph, what is the most simple one you can think of? It's not going to be a line, and I'm actually standing on it. What do you consider Lines. flat surfaces? What are they called? Lines. Planes. So this is the equation of a plane, which is kind of cool if you think about it. So when we have three of these planes running into each other, there's a couple different ways that they can come together. There's a little bit more options, but I'm not going to go into all of them. The easiest option to talk about is using these walls. If you use the ceiling, use the wall on your left and the front wall, they all intersect at that common point way up there, the corner of the so if the planes come together nicely, they will have a single common point that exists for all of them. Of course, then there's a possibility that you're talking about the ceiling, the floor, and maybe the ceiling above us in the second floor. None of them would have any common points at all. So the planes could be what's considered parallel planes. Um, they could intersect as a triangle, and therefore they wouldn't have a common point. And there's a lot of different possibilities. The one we're interested in is where they have the common corner, where they have the common corner. All right, so let's do a simple one. Hopefully it's a simple one. Uh, 2x plus 5y minus z is equal to negative 7. Again, these have to be written in standard form. There is, uh, I, I can't think of any way of doing it without it starting off this way. <laughs> I can only ask one of these on the test. You'll see why in a second. They take actually quite a long time to get through. <sighs> yeah. 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 Now, your goal is this. You can't work with all three variables. You technically only know how to work with two variables. So what you're going to do is you're going to start off by saying, which variable do I want to get rid of? Do I want to get rid of the x's? Do I want to get rid of the y's? Or do I want to get rid of the z? And you have to think, which one would be the easiest one to take care of? Um, I think Z, because 12 is a factor, 4 is a factor of 12, and then 1 is a nice factor up here. So, I could care less about that. They're just nice factors. To change something from negative to a positive, you just multiply by negative 1. That's simplistic. So we're going to choose... <laughs> I'm being silly. To remove, I was thinking of the Z's, the Z's. Now, do you always remove the Z's? Yeah. No, it really depends on what the coefficients of the X, Y, and Z are. Okay, so if we get rid of the Z's, what would I multiply the top one by? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to pair them up. Um, the way I would pair this up, 
I would pair up the first two and get rid of the z's in the first two. And then I'm going to pair up the last two and get rid of the z's in the last two. You can't get rid of them all at once because then you end up with one equation and we really need two. All right, so if I'm looking at the green pair up, how would I get rid of the z's there? Let's call this, um, no, let's give this an A. Let's call this equation A. Let's call this equation B. Let's call this equation C. That way, um, we can use a neat little notation. And I'll show you what it is in a second. Such a good record, too. So if I'm trying to get rid of the z's in the first two equations, what do I want to do to the first equation? Multiply by 4. That way they will cancel out. So the way I'm going to write this is I'm going to have 4a and b. I'm going to multiply the a equation by 4, and I'm going to leave the b equation alone. So when I write this down, this is just a good way of organizing it, to keep things kind of straight. What? I'm just saying this is equation A, and I'm going to take this equation and multiply it by 4. That's all I'm saying. So 4 times 2x, 8x. Eight. Eight 4 times 5y, 20y. 4 times negative z is negative 4z. And 4 times negative 7, negative 28. All right, and then this one says leave v alone. So just copy it down. x minus 11y plus 4z is equal to 1. And you're going to add those two equations together. So if I add them together, we are ending up with 9x plus 9y. The z's are going to cancel, and it's going to equal negative 27. It's an interesting equation if you think about it. 9x, 9y, 27. What do they have in common? Three? Nothing bigger? Nine. Nine. Nine will go into every single one of them. So here's a little trick you could do. Whatever you do to the left, you have to do to the right. right. So why not divide it by nine and make it a little bit nicer? So divide everybody by nine. This doesn't happen all the time, but when it does, it is a nice little thing to do. Get rid of those common factors. And an equation we get out of this is x plus y is equal to negative 3. Does that give me a solution? No. But it does get rid of one of my variables. Now I'm down to a linear equation in two variables rather than linear equations in three. So what we're doing is what's called a reduction. We're making the problem a little bit easier to deal with. And we're going to do the same thing with the bottom two. Same thing, you have to get rid of the z's. So when I get rid of the z's, uh, what can I do to the b equation and the c equation? Multiply the b equation by 3 and leave c alone. So I'm going to go 3b is one of my equations, and c is the other. And this way I can see what I'm multiplying by at each little step. So 3 times the b equation is 3x minus 33y plus 12z equals 3. Don't forget that one. And then you just want to copy down c. And c is negative 5x uh, plus 8y minus 12z is equal to 3. We're going to take these two and add them together and see what happens. Obviously, we set this up so the z's cancel. I think the biggest mistake people do with this is they'll cancel the z's in the first two and the y's in the second two or something like that, and you can't do that. It has to be the same variable. Add these together and you get negative 2x. Ooh. What is it? Minus 25. Y. The z's cancel and you're left with 6. Oh, that one's not so nice. You can't divide anything out, but that's okay. But now we're down to two equations with two unknowns. So what you can do is stack them up as a brand new system. This is x plus y is equal to negative 3 is the first equation way down here. And now you have to decide, 
how do you want to solve this system? Because if I write it underneath, I'm assuming I'm doing elimination. If I write it next to it, I'm assuming I'm doing substitution. Since we haven't done substitution yet, I'm going to do substitution. There's two reasons why I'll do substitution. That's just x plus y. I can solve for the x or the y. It's really simple. So I'm going to write the other equation next to it, which is negative 2x uh, minus 25y is equal to 6. So I'm going to solve that first equation for which variable I could care less. Pick a variable. Y. So if you solve this for y, you're going to subtract the x across, and you're going to get y equals negative x minus 3. Okay. What do you do with the negative x minus 3? Plug it into the other equation. So if I plug it in over here, I'm substituting for y, so this becomes negative 2x minus 25 times something is equal to 6. What's the something? Negative x minus 3. And then uh, distribute. Negative 2x. Plus 25. Oh. Plus 25x. Plus 75 is equal to 6. After you distribute, combine like terms. 23x plus 75 is equal to 6. Subtract 6. That would be 69. Okay, so 23x is equal to negative 69. Remember, we're subtracting 75 across. And if we divide by 23, x is equal to? Three. Well, careful. Three. Negative 3. Woohoo! All that work, and we finally found one of my variables. x equals negative 3. And we're not done yet. We're not done yet. That's why I said I can only put one of these on the test. It has to be really easy. So what can I do with the negative 3 then? Plug it into? Plug it into? That. No, no, because if you go back to the original, then you end up with two equa three equations with two unknowns, and it just gets messy. But if I take it from here, and I do the substitution circular pattern, go back to this one, I can find y. So we're going to get y equals negative times something minus 3. What goes into something? Negative 3. Negative, negative 3 is positive 3 minus 3. So we get y equals 0. Now I have two answers, y equals 0, x equals negative 3. How do I find the third? Go back to the original. Now, which one you choose is up to you. So I would highly suggest you pick the nicest one. The nicest one is? Really? I like A too. I like A. So I'm going to plug it back into A, the equation for A. A is 2x plus 5y minus z is equal to negative 7. And then you plug in what you know. It's going to be 2 times something plus 5 times something minus that z is equal to negative 7. Therefore, 2 times negative 3. 5 times 0. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 5 times 0 is 0 minus z is equal to negative 7. And then finally, add 6. So you get negative z equals negative 1, and therefore z must equal 1. And there's our last coordinate. Now notice something about this. I started over here, I got these two equations, I took these two equations, I put them off to the side, I solve for x and y, and then I go back to the beginning and I plug in and I find z. I have work everywhere. So what should I really do now? Get your answer in one place. So I'm going to put my answer on the only blank boards of the board, which is right here, but I highly suggest you put yours at the bottom. And you write it as a coordinate, x, y, z. x is negative 3, y is 0, z is 1. And there's your solution. These three planes intersect at a common point 
of negative 3, 0, and 1. Which is absolutely crazy. Yeah, stupid. Maybe I find gold with that. Either way, I'll be asking you to do it. It's not bad because it's using stuff that we used in the first section, which is substitution, elimination, and re-putting the answers back into equations. So it's just going one more layer. We're going to have to do another one because I know you didn't really follow that, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> you just didn't want to go there. <laughs> you have to go to the store before this test by a whole ring. All right, let's try one that's a little bit more of a pain. Ooh. You don't have to make the whole thing. Well, I, you work your own work on your own paper, so. <laughs> Let's try this one. A equals C minus B. 3A minus 2B plus 6C is equal to 1. What's wrong? They're just different letters. C equals 4 minus 3B. Minus 7a. <sighs> now, this is identical to the first one we had, except for one problem. It's not written very nicely. It sure is. So, what should we do to each one of these three equations? No. <laughs> Good try, though. What's different about this one than the first one? You got, uh, you got letters. Yeah. I got to get the letters on the, the left side. Okay. And it should be in order, A, B, and C. So if we have to rearrange the top one, what does it rearrange as? You get all the letters on the left-hand side. It would be A. Plus B minus C equals zero because you moved them all over. Well, you subtract C from both sides. You add B to both sides. All right, the second one, is that okay? So we'll call that uh, 3A minus 2B plus 6C is equal to 1. The bottom one. No. 7a. 7a, we'll add the 7a across. Plus 3b, we'll add the b across. Plus c is equal to 4. So there's your three equations. And they're written in standard form, makes life a lot easier for us. Which letter do you want to remove from all of them? C. C? Okay. So C. Just to remind yourself, I write that off to the side. Remove C. And don't stop removing C until you come up with two linear equations. Straight line, two variable equations. All right, we'll do the same thing. We'll call this one capital A. We'll call the second one capital B. And we'll call the third one capital C. And we'll group it the same way. Why change? We'll do the top two first, remove the C, and then we'll do the bottom two first, uh, second, and remove the C. How do I remove the C in the top one? Multiply by six. So we're going to go six times A for the top one. What do I do to the B equation? Leave it there. So I'm just going to leave B alone. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by six and leave the B equation totally by itself. Okay. So let's see, this becomes 6a plus 6b minus 6c equals 0. And then just copy b down. 3a minus 2b plus 6c is equal to 1. Add them together. 3a, 6a is 9a plus 4b is equal to 1. Oh, darn it. I was hoping for a common factor, but we don't get it. So we're stuck with 
9a plus 4b is equal to 1. All right. Do the same thing for the bottom two. I want to get rid of the c, so what do I multiply by? Negative 6 to the bottom or negative 1 to b and positive 6 to the bottom. I don't care which one. But we'll do six to the, negative 6 to the bottom. So we'll leave the b alone. And we'll multiply c by negative 6. Big c, capital C, not little c. So we'll take the b equation, which is 3a minus 2b plus 6c. Just copy it down. 3a minus 2b plus 6c. Oops, oops. Sixty is equal to zero, and negative six times the bottom equation. Negative forty-two a. Negative eighteen b minus sixty is equal to. Negative 24. The zero? That zero? That zero. Oh, wait a minute. Where am I getting that zero from? B equals zero. Yeah, that's one. At least you're awake. Okay, add them together. Ugh. Negative 39. A. Minus 20. B is equal to negative 23. Well, that's a horrible equation, too. All right. So the two linear equations that we just came up with, they're not as nice as the first one. But that's okay. Uh, do you want to do substitution or elimination with these two? Elimination. I would do elimination. They're not friendly at all. Neither. Neither. Uh, so we have 9a plus 4b equals 1 from the first one. And negative 39a minus 20b is equal to negative 23. In that system, which letter do you want to get rid of? B. A is not even going to be touched because that's ugly. So if we get rid of B, we're going to multiply the top one by 5 and leave the bottom one alone. I'll just show that by multiplying by 1. And then see what happens. That's 45A plus 20B. Don't forget the 1. Make it to 5. And then the bottom one, leave it alone. Negative 39a minus 20b is equal to negative 23. And add them together. And hopefully we don't end up with a fractional answer. That's boring. Uh, 6. 6a equals 18. Negative 18. Yeah, you make a sign mistake here, boys. It's going to take you forever to find it. Too much work going on. So you've got to be careful at every step. Divide both sides by 6, and you get A is equal to negative 3. So there's one of our answers. By the way, these answers are not going to turn out to be fractions. So if you end up with a fraction, you did something wrong. These problems are hard enough as it is to have fractional answers. So they're going to be all integer. They're all going to be integer. So if this ended up being like negative 3 fifths, go looking for a mistake. because. The book, I don't even think the book has answers in the fractions. No, all their answers are whole numbers. Oh, wait a minute, that's the wrong question. Make sure. They have one with fractions that I see. Number 23. We'll skip that. We'll skip that. But for my test purposes, it'll be integers, guaranteed. Okay, so now that I have a is equal to negative 3, where do I go? To the first smaller one. So I want to take a equals negative 3 and substitute it back into one of those. Which one? The 9 one. All right. So if we're going to substitute it into the first one, it'll be 9 times something. 
plus 4 times b is equal to 1. The something is negative 3. 9 times negative 3 is negative 27 plus 4b is equal to 1. Four B equals twenty-eight. Oh yeah, you use that. Add the twenty-seven across, so that becomes twenty-eight. Also, if it was twenty-six, we'd end up with a fraction. Yeah. Divide by four, and B equals seven. There is our second solution, and now where? Now your choice. You could use the ones that we rearranged, or you can use the original ones. I would use the original one. This one will work fine. So if I use that one. You get A equals C minus B. A is equal to negative 3. C, I don't know. B is equal to 7. How do you solve for C? And we get C equals 4. There's our third answer. Now we just got to get them all together. It's going to go alphabetical, so the point will be A, B, C, just like X, Y, Z. So negative 3 comma, seven, comma, four. And there's our coordinate of intersection. Isn't that fun? I do. I do. The difference between two numbers is 10. If, there are, if three times the larger is added to twice the smaller, the result is 70. Find the two numbers. Okay. But watch, it's not that bad. First off, what don't you know? I don't know either one of the numbers. So you have a choice. You're going to say, let x be larger number, because they were talking about a larger number and a smaller number, so we can separate them. Let x be the larger number. Let y be the smaller number. So when you're doing a word problem, your first goal is to find out what you don't know, not what you do know. You go for what you don't know. That way you can set up your variables the correct way. A lot of people try to jump into it and throw a variable into a problem and try to solve it without really knowing what the variable represents. So you start off with what the variable represents, and the problem actually becomes a little bit easier after that. Now the first one says, the difference between two numbers is 10. Now stop there for a second. Is it going to be y minus x or x minus y? It's got to be largest minus smallest because the answer is positive. So your first equation is x minus y is equal to 10. It has to be. It can't be the other way around. All right, second part. If 3 times the larger is added to twice the smaller, the result is 70. So... 3x plus twice the smaller, so 2y, is equal to 70. Ta-da, done. You have your setup. Once you have your setup, the problem to solve is not that bad. How do you want to solve it? Solve the top of the denomination. Sure, solve the top of for y. I would solve for x, but that's just me. Because if you have to solve for y, you eventually have to move the negative. So solve this one for x, and you get x equals y plus 10. Take this y plus 10, plug it into the other equation. So we're going to get 3 something plus 2y is equal to 70. Inside the parentheses goes y plus 10. And you get 3y plus 30 plus 2y equals 70. Wow, this is hard. I put this on the test, you should say thank you. This is 5y plus 30 is equal to 70, right? Yeah, yeah okay. Now what? 5y is equal to 40, and therefore y is equal to 8. There's one of your answers. One of the numbers we're working with is 8. got to find out what the other one is. Easiest equation? The first one. So we're going to take this and plug it into x minus y is equal to 10. We know y is equal to 8. So we get oops, x minus 8 is equal to 10. Therefore, x is equal to 18. And there's our other number. So the two numbers are 18 and 8. 
Ta-da! What's so hard about that? You have to read it. Oh my god, how horrible was it to read it and say the difference and three times one of them and two times the other one? I mean, they tell you everything. You just have to throw it on a piece of paper. That's the most simple one up here. It is the simplest one up there. Because <laughs> now they get harder. But we have to start off small to kind of get you comfortable with these. In the shack. And then I'll eventually, yeah, we'll get over there. Let's try uh, number eight. Or number six. <laughs> number six has less words. Let's go with that one. <laughs> now nah, let's do number eight. Number eight. Number eight. I didn't want to scare you too bad. Fear. It's a horrible thing. Radar ma uh, detector manufacturing. Zentex makes auto radar, radar detector. Auto radar detectors. Um, they have found that its basic model requires three hours of manufacturing on the inside components and two hours for the housing and the controls. Its advanced mile model requires five hours to manufacture the inside components and three hours for the housing and controls. This week, the production division has available blah, blah, blah. We'll get to that in a second. What? We don't care about all the numbers. What we care about is what don't we know? <clears throat> what don't we know about this whole thing? How many types can be made? Yeah, how many different types can be made? Now, what types are there? They are. Is it how many types can be made? Same one. No, no, no. I'm just saying. How many of these types? This week, the production has available 10,000, well, 1,050 hours and 660 hours. And, yeah, how many? So, those hours too, but no, no, because it's, it tells you how many hours each one of them makes. So, what kind of detectors do we have? Radar. Yeah, radar. I don't know. Oh, no. well, what did they say? How? Oh, no. What kind of models do they have? Basic model. There's a basic model, and they advanced. Advanced model. So, let me write it this way: basic, advanced. Now, if you're going to make a basic model, what is required of you? What do you have to do? You're a manufacturing company. You have to build the basic model. What is required of you? Three hours of manufacturing and two for the inside. There's an inside part? And then there's the? The outside part. It's called just the inside part and the outside part. You're going to make the inside, and then you're going to put the housing, which is the outside, around it. How many hours does it take to build the inside of a basic machine? Three. Three. How many hours does it take to build the outside of a basic machine? Two. Two. Do you see what I'm doing with the information? I'm creating a table to organize it, because if you don't have any organization, you'll never get through this problem. You have to get it organized. What about the advanced model? Five. Five hours for the inside and? Three for the outside. Okay. And then in the second part of the problem, it gives you a little bit of a hint. It tells you how many hours are per, uh, they have available for producing the inside. And it tells you how many hours it has for producing the outside. Well, how many hours do they have for the inside? 10 to 50. 10 to 50. How many hours do they have for the inside? 660. 660. <coughs> All right. Now is the time to figure out what's going on, because this one's a little different than this. This was easier to find the unknown first. This one, the unknown, is a little bit more you know, foggy. But now that you have your information, your equations are this way. They can't be this way because there's only two numbers in a row. So if your equation's coming this way, what are your unknowns? Well, how many of them are basic, and how many of them are going to be advanced? So we're going to let x equal number of basic models we're going to produce, and we're going to let y equal number of uh, advanced. advanced. There we go. Okay. So, if you make two uh, basic models, how long does it take you to do the insides? Six hours. Six hours. So when I do x number of basics, this is going to become three 
It'll be three times no matter how many of these basic models you're going to make. All right? And if it takes two hours for each one of our basic models, this is going to be 2x. It's the number of basic models you're making. All right. Same thing for advanced. If we make uh, four advanced, it's going to be 5 times 4 and 3 times 4, and we're going to uh, figure it out that way. So if this is y number of advanced, this becomes 5 times y, and this becomes 3 times y. Now you've got to think about it. There's one line that will be doing the inside of the component. They hand it off to the other line, and they're going to do the outside of each component. So how do you find out the total number of hours for inside? I know there's only 1,050 available, but how do I find out how many hours it's going to take up making basics in advance? Yeah. So you're going to get 3x plus 5y must equal 1,050. 1,050. Marco, I think you work at a bank. <laughs> Actually, if you take one of my 1,000 checks, I'll take you say 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> and the second equation would be 2x plus 3y is equal to 660. And there's your two equations. It's not horrible. It just takes a little longer than you want to take. Which variable do you want to get rid of? X. How do you want to get rid of it? First one by 2. Negative 3 for the second one. Okay. So this is 6x plus 10y equals 20, no, 21. 100. Okay. Yeah. This is negative 6x. Negative 9y is equal to, I don't know. 19 gauge? 19 gauge? Uh, and it'll be negative. Alright. So X's go away. We're like, oh, this is nice. 10y minus 9y is y. And then it'll give us a direct answer of 120. So we're going to make 120 advanced models. with our available work uh, for that. And then we're going to take that answer and plug it into one of the original equations. Which one? Um, the bottom one, I think, is easier. So we're going to get 2x plus 3y is equal to 660. And plug in 120. So 2x plus 3 times 120 is equal to 660. 360. So that'd be 2x plus 360 is equal to 660. 300. So 2x equals 300, and x equals 150. So we're only going to make 150 basic models. E L or L E? I always forget. Bob L. So a lot of these word problems, you're going to have to do a little bit of organization. You're going to have to find out what kind of things are going on and what are related to each other. So the basic and the advanced split it up nicely in the beginning, and then you just had to figure out that the rest of the problem was about the inside and the outside, and then associate all the numbers with it, and then figure out what the heck you didn't know, which in this case was, how many of each are you making? All right. What time is it?